back to another Barely Art Live. We've got a special guest crafter on today, which we're very excited about. Before we get into crafting, I will give out a few announcements. So first of all, we've got... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. requesting your favorite store if you want to see barely art products in your local stores you can go to our website barely.art and request uh we, we reach out to your store for wholesale so definitely check that out um that is again on our website barely.art we also have wishbone stamps holiday stamps for sale so if you are a stamper a card maker a stampy crafter go on our website and check those out they are on sale right now so definitely get the holiday ones the christmas ones are so cute i promise you Next, we've got Friends of Barely Art. If you are a crafter who has their own product or know of a crafter who has their own products and they want a little help um, distributing and want a to get on our Barely Art platform, let them know about us. We've got our Friends of Barely Art program where we sell and help distribute crafting crafters' products such as um, the Wishbone Stamps and also those glue holders you guys are so in love with, which will be coming back again. And then do do do. I think last we have our giveaway announcement. We had a giveaway this week with Needle Labels. Uh, it was on our Instagram, and we've got a winner here. So they will be winning, I believe, four uh, Needle Label products. I think the uh, matte paper, um, clear sticker paper, gl extra glossy paper, and there's one more. I can't remember what it is, but they'll also be winning a $115 Bailey Art gift card. And the winner that we'll also on our I'll post on the post itself but the winner is at sue and thompson s-u-e-a-n-n-t-h-o-m-a-s-o-n -N -N -O -O so congratulations sue um we'll message you and you can dm us with your information and we'll get back to you so congratulations and now we can introduce our very lovely and wonderful crafter. You know her, you've seen her on Battle Bears last cards for Cubs. <laughs> this is Kimberly from Sky Creations. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Andrea. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs> of course, excited to have you back, but this time you won't be fighting anybody. We'll just be crafting. <laughs> Yeah, no punching um, bags today. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to tell everyone what we're making today? Yeah, so today we're going to be making a wooden sign um, adorned with paper flowers. So um, this is great for the holidays, for a gift, for baby showers, um, nursery rooms. Um, so you can use it for anything. Today we're going to focus on a Thanksgiving theme um, so we can welcome our families to our homes this upcoming Thanksgiving. Perfect. I'm so excited. <laughs> We've got like, what, three different paper flower um, techniques we're going to try out today? Yes. Yeah. There's three different flowers um, that we will be making. Um, and each one you you'll learn some of the techniques that I've learned through the five years I've been making paper flowers. So mm -hmm. hopefully it teaches some tricks and tips. So it's a little bit easier for, for some. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited. Just an FYI, guys, we did make a few of them beforehand just to make sure we get to everything today. But we'll be going through all the techniques of each one. Mm -hmm. All right, Kimberly, as our crafting expert. Would you like to take the lead and where should we start? Sure. I'm just going to flip the camera around and get a set up. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. All right. Let's see. Hello, everyone. We've already got lots of crafted on to say hi. Hello. Designs by GGLs. A little clapping emojis. And then Unique by Liz is a little waving. Hi. Welcome, you guys. So happy to have you on here. We're super excited to get crafty today. This is a really cute sign. It's uh, We're using like a 16-inch circle wooden sign. It's beautiful. I got mm -hmm. mine off of Amazon. I we do believe I put the link in the bio. Um, ours was just this like plain white one, or this light-colored one. But I also went and got the, or used the Bailey Art Forest inks to make this stain it kind of a little bit and make it a little darker, so... It looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. Yes. And what did you say you used, Andrea? What are the I used alcohol? the, um, yeah, the, I have it right here, the Bailey Alcohol Inks. Oh. Just so I got some of that. And I used the Walnut and Cherry. I mixed it in with some other just alcohol, um, rubbing alcohol, I think. Isopropylene. And I put it, like, in a cup and then just used a sponge brush to color it on. So it turned out pretty good. I was, yeah, I was happy yeah. with it. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, I like that color. The one yeah. I have here that's for the sample, I did stain this one. Mm -hmm. um, I like working with stain, except you have to make sure that you vent everything very well because the smell will linger 
years. I'm sorry. Uh, you want to <laughs> vent your areas. But yes. yes. I think what we can do, Andrea, is start off with the easiest um, paper flower to make. I think okay. out of the ones we have selected. Um, and it's going to be this one here. Um, you'll have, this is our sunflower template. Our end product, we are hoping to make these here. Mm -hmm. So they're very nice and fluffy. They have a lot of dimension to them. Um, and what we're going to need are three of the larger petals that are on the cup file. So here are your three. One mm -hmm. of like the medium size, one of the small size. And then for the brown color, you'll want two of the larger size and two of the smaller size. Like Perfect. This. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the centers. And I do this just because I want to give the glue some time to um, set before touching them too much again. Um, what we can do is start off with these two little ones. You're going to want to use a like um, a paper uh, roller. They, you can mm -hmm. use something like this or like a ballpoint pen that has a soft edge. Um, and what we're going to do, um, we're going to rub the center of our flowers. I'm using um, on here, there are like molding mats. This is actually um, a mat that I got on one of the electronics that we purchased many years <laughs> ago. They come with little foamy packs. So those work perfectly. If you don't have one, you can use a mouse pad as well. Um, just turn it around, not on the graphic side and use the foamy part in the back. So what we wanna do is we want to shake these two smaller brown um, petals, mm -hmm. just like this so that they, they turn into like a little cup. Got it, perfect. Okay. So cute. Yes, I heard uh, lots of people use different kind of sponges. This one I think was specific, like a sponge crafting mat. But I remember someone uh -huh. else told me that they used, um, like it was packing as well from like a, a shipment that they got. Yes, and like, yeah, and they, they're very sturdy. <laughs> Perfect. So once you have that molded and sculpted a little bit, you're going to want to take the edges and you're just gently folding it in to create like a closed bud. Okay. Let's see if you can see that. Bud right there. So tiny. You're kind of folded, yeah, it's tiny. So you're gonna place this one inside of the other small um, brown petal, of course, using our Barely Arts glue. It's perfect for this. <laughs> yes, breaking out the Barely Arts already. Cool. <laughs> Okay, and then we place it right in the center of the other small petal. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna gently get both of them. So you have the closed one and the open one, and you're going to fold in the second one, just like you did with the inner one. Just gently, just so it's not sticking out so much. And we're creating the center of our sunflower. Awesome. Oh, they're so cute. Yeah, perfect. So now we're going to take our larger brown petals. You can layer them one on top of the other just to help um, ease your fingers from having to pinch so much. <laughs> and we're going to pinch each petal. <laughs> After you do so many, your fingers do appreciate you taking a little bit of a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so I can want... imagine so. <laughs> so here we're pinching each one halfway down the middle and we're going to go all around. How many paper flowers would you say you've made? Oh my, I've lost count. Um, <laughs> usually, <laughs> so like on a typical wooden sign, it's usually about 15 flowers. Um, and then for wedding backdrops, I would say anywhere from 50 to 80 paper flowers are on the backdrops. And those oh, can wow. range from 12 inches to 24 inches. Um, so several, <laughs> over five That's years, <laughs> I kind of lost count. It's <laughs> a lot of paper flowers, Kimberly. Yes, yeah. I, I'm, I have a green thumb for paper flowers. Don't ask me <laughs> to keep a real plant alive as <laughs> <Yes>, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So once you have that, you have your two pieces like this. They're nice and folded. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and 
and do the same thing with the paper roller. You're going to sculpt them in the middle, just gently, just to, what this does, it helps pick up the petals so it's not flat. It kind of does like a little cup going up. Mm -hmm. um, and it helps just add volume and dimension to your flowers. So you're going to go ahead and grab one of them again. Apply the glue. And place it inside of the other brown petal. What I like to do is offset the petals. So you have the top layer and the bottom layer and the petals are not flush. They're offset like this. Okay. And that also does help make it look really nice. Awesome. It kind of gives it that more full effect. Yes. Perfect. Let me just, whoops. And there we go. Perfect. Then we grab that little center bud that we had folded at the very beginning. We're going to place that right in the middle of the other brown petals. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, so this is how we it. prepare the center for the sunflower. We can leave that to the side just for now to let it set and dry fully. And we can assemble the bottom of the flower now. Perfect, sounds good. Perfect, so let's start with the three larger petals. And again, you can overlap them on each other. And we're going to do the same technique. We're gonna go ahead and take our finger and fold right down the middle like this. I've seen others, um, they use like the, this is a scraper from mm -hmm. when you put on your mat. I've seen that they do this and it helps them as well, just depending on how your your um, hands are feeling. And they've mm -hmm. also used their like paper creasers. So it just really depends on what you like to use. I like to use my fingers. It, think, it I think it just goes faster. <laughs> making so many. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine so. Looks good. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. I like this one. This was, the, I think, the easiest one you said, the flowers. Yes. And this was my favorite because it was easier. <laughs> but <laughs> I like the way the other ones turned out, too. I'm really excited to show off those. Um, I think the second attempt I made at one of them turned out better, but I'll show you guys that later. And this is a lot of, not a lot of, but it's like, it's a, let's see, we've got three of these big layers and then one medium, one small. So it's already five layers, not including the center. So no wonder these look so full and beautiful. Yes. Yeah, definitely. The layering helps and um, especially with the sunflowers. So with these, once you have the three bottom creased, you'll do the same thing with the medium size and the small size. Perfect. Would you say the simpler flowers, as far as technique like this one, or the more complicated ones are your favorite to do? I think it just depends. Like if it's um, a wedding, I like to use roses and those are definitely more complicated and time consuming to me. <laughs> I just like the elegancy, but the sunflowers for spring, um, even the fall, and it, it's just so pretty. They they have a, a really nice meaning. So it, it makes it nice to make meaningful flowers as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's coming out perfect. I love this. It's so, I like just this pinching because I remember you told me because we talked beforehand about just pinching the flowers and I was just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm afraid it was going to get really, um, <laughs> like it's kind of like the opposite of what I usually do as far as, you know, you're so delicate with paper, you don't want to like, crease it or anything but then this was just like nope just kind of smush it yeah. in together <laughs> yeah this one's a little <laughs> bit more forgiving and it's the type of petal that since it's nice and long you can't really mm -hmm. sculpt it any other way so pinching it is perfect so now what we do is once you have your three large petals creased um, mm -hmm. again you can get the roller um, and gently Put some pressure in the middle just to raise the petals a little bit taller. Just like mm -hmm. that. And you can tell the difference. They were really flat and they kind of just go up. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the brown petals. You'll take one of the layers, place some glue, and place it on top of another layer. Again, offsetting the petals so that they are mm -hmm. not overlapping. 
just like this. I see someone's asking what type of um, machine was used for cutting the base. So this base actually um, was cut with my X-Carve. It's a CNC machine. Um, it's really great. It has a lot of, um, it throws a lot of sawdust. So you want to make sure you have that well ventilated and a good <laughs> vacuum in the area. Um, and the letters were also cut with that machine. I think Andrea, yours, you have an Amazon link for your base, correct? Yes. Ours, we just, um, the space here, I just ordered on Amazon. It was a 16 inch circle, um, base and I'm pretty sure you linked it. If I didn't, I will. <laughs> but it was, uh, I think it was one of the very few, it came in a pack of two and it's funny cause I got it on the back. I thought it was like a solid one, but the back came with like an, a place to like this extra layer so you can hang it from oh, somewhere, wow. which okay. I was like surprising, but I was like, Oh, that works too. And then it did come like this color. You guys, I did use the Bailey art forest inks to dye mine a little bit and get darker. That's what I've got there. Yes, and I'm going to have to try the alcohol inks to try to stain some of the wood crafts for <laughs> the holiday seasons. I'm going to have to try it now. I can't, I cannot not try it. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it would work that well. Because um, I know it's like, it's browns. And I was like, I'm almost afraid it would mm -hmm. come out blotchy or something. But I did mix it in with isopropyl in a cup beforehand. So I had like a lot to okay. use. And uh, then I just kind of used a sponge brush and went back and forth. And it came out really well. I was very excited about it. Good. The only thing I would caution is uh, not putting too much of it's a, like a water solution because the mm -hmm. water, the wood will absorb it and it can cause it to, to kind of um, miss like uh, paint shapes. So mm -hmm. just being careful with that. <laughs> Once you have your, your three large petals assembled on an offset, you're going to get your medium one apply some glue and do the same thing. Apply it as an offset on top of those. And the same thing with your last petal. So even this here looks really pretty. Has a lot of volume. Yeah, that's what I really like about this one is that it was easy to get the volume up. Yes. And then we take our little tiny center that we made earlier, apply some glue to the back and place it in the middle of the flower. It might be a little difficult because the other flowers are really um, facing upward. Uh -huh. I usually get the same molding tool and I press down right in the center. And this also helps just so the glue can start setting on where I want it to be and keeps everything in place. Perfect. So I... And just apply a little bit of pressure and there it is oh, excuse me <laughs> oh how pretty Ta -da! our first flower perfect there this is can. our first one we've got two more flower techniques you guys so stay tuned yes we're still working on it but these are so <laughs> cute i really like these they did come out really nice i like how they go up a lot that volume yeah. here i'll turn mine to the side so you guys can see how it's up in this like little mm -hmm. cup is what she was saying instead of laying flat. Ta da! Okay. okay, I will set those aside. Lovely flowers. Great. So now we can start working on the next petal. Okay. Um, it's the one shaped like this here. And it looks rather familiar. Where did you get this flower? <laughs> So this petal, I was browsing around on the Barely Art website, and I saw this petal on the Hawaiian Lei SVG that you all have. And it's to make the Hawaiian flowers, but I thought we can definitely repurpose it um, and use this petal to add um, dimension to a flower. So definitely using the free SVGs on the website, and <laughs> it, it, it makes really pretty flowers at the end. Awesome. Yeah. And also guys, this project, um, it is an SVG for free on our website, barely.art or link in our bio. If you're on Instagram, check it out. Um, uh, we've got everything you need there. And then, but if you want to, again, like, just like Kimberly did, you can repurpose any of our SVGs. So download, get creative and then tag us if you post it, because we would love to see it. Yeah. So this one, we'll actually use four petals of the large one. So we have okay. our four petals here. 
one petal of the medium and one of the small. Got it. Okay, perfect. And again, let's start with the center just so that it can start setting. Um, with these, we are going to use um, like rolling the petals as the technique. Mm -hmm. I have this silhouette. Um, it's a vinyl, um, like to pick up the vinyl, but I actually like the bottom end that it's uh, pointy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I use it for something else. So um, it's pointy. It's nice to roll the paper along. Um, you might be a little worried to crease the paper, so you just want to be a little bit careful with that. But if you do it nice and softly and over and over again, you're able to roll the side of the petals upward. And you do that on both sides. And I'm just using a regular old paintbrush I had. I liked the end of this yes. one. It's pretty thin, so you guys don't don't worry. You don't have to get like fancy tools mm -hmm. for it. You don't have to go crazy and buy a whole bunch of things. I know when I start a hobby, I try and buy everything, but you don't have to. <laughs> Take your time, no, see what you've definitely. got, and it works just as well. And I think the key is finding what works for you. So, like right now, mm -hmm. I feel my fingers are a little swollen, so I actually went down and got a a little. These are the kebab sticks you use for like fruit kebabs. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> so I'm sure you have some in your kitchen. So you can actually use that to roll the petal and it rolls up nicely around it. And it makes a tighter roll and a tighter curl, which uh -huh. is nice. Okay, so we have the small one curled upward and we're gonna do the same thing with the medium sized one. Perfect, all right, got mine rolled on to the next. And I like this making the small paper flowers because I can pre-cut the petals and then load them in a basket and take them with me to do school pickups for the girls. <laughs> I take my handy dandy glue with me to finish some orders that way. Yes. <laughs> I did hear um, someone, a couple of people have told me like, but I can't use like hot glue. It's nice to have barely out when I'm in my car and I'm using that pickup line uh, weight mm -hmm. time. Yeah, definitely. It helps. <laughs> we got a question on Instagram. It says from Intrivinely Papa it says, are the papers wooden? Um, the papers I have here are wooden. I did cut them out using a glow forge and just some, uh, I think it's a quarter inch uh, medium base wood or something like that. Um, I did come out with that, but you can cut them out paper um, and layer things like that. I have personally on mine right now, a wooden layers. I think this Perfect. one is a little harder curling these petals. I'm having, I'm struggling just a teeny bit. <laughs> I ripped a little bit of it. Upward. <laughs> as long as they go upward, you're okay. We can go back and, and shape them a little more. We're okay. working on the rosebud. So once you have the small um, petal folded up, mm -hmm. we're going to lift one petal up and then the next and the next, the one that's right next to it. And what we're doing is one side of the petal goes in and one stays on the outside. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a little motion. We're going to just twist it to kind of close the petal. And you see it's a complete like little pyramid. You see the little yeah top of it here the tip it gets face and then the small. bottom it creates like a pentagon yeah okay and mine's a little smushy flat. but <laughs> so with I time you'll see. be able to get it nice and flat so this is your, <laughs> your center bud and you want to glue this right into the middle of your middle petals perfect i will do that now just like that Perfect. So we want to put this to the side and that way um, it starts setting since we'll be touching that in a little bit. Good. And then we can we continue on with the four large petals. Same thing, um, curling the insides in. You can use whichever tool you find handy. I think you also were trying to use the quilling tools, right, Andrea? These, I was trying to use the quilling well. tools. Yeah. Uh-huh. I had this longer one. Um, well, I'm trying to see if I could show you guys which direction. There we go. I'll just show you downwards. I had a cling tool I was using, um, but it was a pretty thin. I was struggling with it, so I liked something a little bit thicker. Was I got my 
uh, paintbrush here as it was working for me a little better. And it seems to be a little bit more forgiving when you do the small paper flowers, when you curl them like this, mm -hmm. when I'm making large paper flowers and you curl them, you have to be careful because then you do it too rough and it leaves a little like skid mark. So for <laughs> some reason, the smaller ones don't show that the big petals do. So if you're making large paper flowers, just take your time so you don't have those skid marks everywhere. <laughs> Got it. Take your time. This is a, it's not a quick something. You kind of be gentle with it. Yes. Okay. I think I'm getting the hang of, I think the bigger one's a little bit easier for my hands to get around. Yes. As and I learn. <laughs> and if it helps Andrea here, um, once you have it somewhat curled and you want it more, you can use your thumb and kind of roll it back and forth. And that also helps with the curling. Okay. I do that a lot with my rose, my rose petals and that, that just makes it much nicer. Got it. Oh, nice. Yes. I see that. Looks lovely. Perfect. So the next step, we're going to take these four and do the same thing we did with the rosebud, pick up one petal and then the next and keep on going to make another bud just like this. And then you squeeze it close together and turn to close it. And, and that's with just one with... of them or all, or you're doing all uh, at once? I did all of them at once. Okay. And that way they, they all have the same um, like dimension and shape. Ah, and I do this just so idea. that the petals don't stay flat. It's bringing them upward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there. Tiny little Perfect. pyramid. Yeah, you make your little pyramid and then kind of like twist it. The top, pinch it closed. And then we're going to start with the bottom petal. Mm -hmm. and the next to the bottom petal. Okay. So the very bottom one goes down on your work surface. Um, I know we can either shape them, but I think these, you don't really need to shape the bottom because they're already upward. Okay. You can go ahead and place glue on them. And the important part is offsetting the petals. So you want to make sure the petal is in between the other two. Got it. That was my mistake before, you guys. So it is important. Don't skip that step. <laughs> definitely offset. That definitely gives it a lot more um, volume and make it look, makes it look more full. And it looks just, just so much better. <laughs> and then we continue on with the next petal that we have. And again, you offset it. And I'm pushing down in between putting each petal just so that mm -hmm. the glue can go to its place and it can start setting well. And then finally, the fourth layer. Perfect. There we go. And it's looking really nice. Yes. So oh, we're going to go back already. to our center. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my center. Grab here. your center and we're going to do the same thing, creating that bud. So going on one petal to the next, to the next, just closing it up. This one, you can do a soft twist because you don't want to ruin the one inside. Just do a really soft twist. Okay. Again, you have a pentagon on the bottom. Place some glue on there, and you're going to want to place that inside of your four layers that you've already assembled. Use them. Twist and a little. To apply some pressure. And there you go. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to get mine in here. You need a little pressure. There we go. Um, 
mine didn't, I don't think I could, I didn't pinch the center as well as, as you did, but I got, I think it looks pretty good still. What do you guys yeah. think? <laughs> Definitely. Oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, this is a really nice one. <laughs> so from a Hawaiian lay to a beautiful flower, fall flower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you get creative with, um, these files, which I love about that. I definitely didn't think about changing the lay into something like this, which would be beautiful for the around Hello Pumpkin. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So now I think we're going to do the more difficult um, flower. Um, this one, I forget what the name of it was online, but it is also a barely art uh, flower. Um, and we're going to manipulate it a little bit more than just what it is cut. So we have four of the large layer. Okay. We have one again of the medium and the small. What we're going to do here is take the four large petals. They're all layered on top of each other. And we're going to actually cut into the petal, not where the heart, like the center of the heart is. We're going to mm -hmm. cut downward here. So when you cut in between the petals, you're actually mm. creating like a little heart shape. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So inward. Yeah. Yes. And you want to go in about like a quarter, a, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Not all the way that we're going to make the petals like fall off, but a good <laughs> amount so that you can actually tape them. Gotcha. So it kind of oh, looks like a, little heart. what are they? A clover. Oh yeah, it looks like a clover. That's what we see got that right now, guys? Yeah. Cute. We're gonna do the it. same cut for the medium and the small ones as well. Okay. Now I saw a friend on here, Diana's decorative designs is beautiful colors, and she said, "Looks awesome, Andrea. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> I'm doing my best." And then hello. <laughs> Hello, Missies underscore seven. Hello, what are you doing? Hello, guys. If you're just joining us, we are working on some paper flowers right now. We've already gone through um, two techniques so far. We've got these little pretty flowers here. And we're going to adorn a lovely wooden sign that says Hello Pumpkin on it for uh, some fall home decor. And so far, I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm keeping myself up. And <laughs> Kimberly's teaching. <laughs> um, Kimberly, we've got from Sky Creations here showing us the way. You're doing awesome, Andrea. Very Thank good. You. I was very nervous when I first started making small paper flowers, but it's just, it's just getting your fingers in there and kind of <laughs> <laughs> have the paper cooperate with you. <laughs> right. I think it's the one, the hardest part is the paper sometimes doesn't want to cooperate. Mm -hmm. So I'm and learning you know, right I now. Actually, I actually use m m the majority of the paper. I use the 65 pound paper. Um, I found anything thicker might be a little bit difficult to mold or to to add some dimension to it. But oh, it might okay. just be the paper I've worked with. But I, I like 65 pound the most. Yeah, I haven't worked with, um, I usually work with 65 pound. I think otherwise I've used like 100 pound, not for flowers, but just in general. And I can imagine that being very, very thick, not, not really good for something like this. So I would say yeah. 65 is pretty good and it's still sturdy and keeps it shaped just lovely so yes definitely so now once you have all of your petals cut we're going to do the same technique on folding it the petals in the same direction upward mm -hmm. like you've done before this particular style i do like to curl them a little bit more uh tightly for the curl to be more defined so if you do it like this one and then once you have them taken apart, you can curl them individually again to just add more of the, the dimension. Gotcha. And this would definitely not really be possible if we didn't cut it there, you guys. So uh, that is one step for this technique that you'll want to take note of. How'd you start doing paper flowers, Kimberly? Um, it was a family member that was having a, a bridal 
shower and they asked mm -hmm. me to make the decorations and they that's when the whole paper flowers kind of went into a craze um <laughs> I said yeah I can do that uh I've seen pictures I'm not sure that I would have been okay <laughs> with those being up at my bridal shower but it was a start <laughs> <laughs> the beginning it was definitely a start a beginning and then just from there I just kept on working with them um different styles or different uh sizes um it's just trying to find what works best for you there's some templates like these that it's one one I guess cut out per layer and then there's mm -hmm. other flowers that you individually place each petal per layer and those uh. are a little bit more um time consuming or it's just a different effect that you get from them mm -hmm. so that's how I started and from there I made my daughter's um trolls birthday theme um oh, party. Uh -huh. and so we did like those really <laughs> bright colored paper flowers and everything and it was just so much fun that's cool. I did. Um, I had a little cousin I used to babysit and he loved the movie trolls. And so I know exactly what kind of bright colors you're talking about. <laughs> Perfect. So once you have those um, rolled upward, again, we're going to start with the center and the centers. I usually do them like this. I like how it looks in the middle. Um, if you wanted to place like a gem inside instead, or a few beads or, or uh, just rhinestones, and that's definitely mm -hmm. an option as well. I like keeping it a little bit more simple, but again, we create our little bud by folding the smallest petals upward. Cute. Almost there. I've got, I got a little stuck here on this one, the smallest <laughs> one, but I'm almost where you're at. <laughs> yeah, no worry. It's just, I, it, it comes a little bit more naturally for me now that <laughs> I made so many. Of them. That's why you're the expert here. <laughs> okay, let's see. I got mine up now. I just need to get into a little bud. And it says layered flowers are definitely easier for those who are not so advanced in the paper flower making. Yes, so like me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. They do so I think you're, you're getting your little bud there. Good job, Andrea. Thank you, thank you. Done. And then, of course, this one has a little pentagon on the bottom. We're going to place some glue on there and then right in the middle of the medium petal. Perfect. Just like that. We're going to let this rest just for a little bit. All right. Sounds good. Let's put her aside. Oh. Yeah. And we're going to do the same thing we did earlier um, with the larger petals. We're mm -hmm. also going to take one up and then keep going all around. Okay. Doing a, a soft twist. This one, you don't have to do it too much. Just... A little bit is okay. Just so you can get the petals up so it looks like a little mini pie there. A little pie. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> it's one time for me, so. <laughs> true, true. You're in El Paso, right? Fellow Texan, but yeah. still a different time zone. That's just how big Texas different is. Different time zone. Yes. It's crazy. I know. <laughs> I think I think it takes us the same amount to drive to like if I wanted to go to LA and see some of our other design team members, then uh -huh. it would be going to the Barely Art headquarters. Like <laughs> it's the same <laughs> amount of driving. <laughs> That's so. crazy. You'd think it'd be so much closer, but it's not. Texas it's is a not. little too big sometimes, <laughs> I swear. So perfect. Again, we're gonna use the last layer and the second to last layer, so the fourth and third. We're gonna place them inside. This part is where if you wanted to shape it, like if you're twisting upward, didn't really get it to go up too much, you do wanna mm -hmm. use this just to keep the flowers up. Okay. Just a soft, a soft um, pressure on there. And then you place them on the other layer. And again, offsetting the petals from the back, and then you put your new petal in between. 
Got it. And you'll do the same rows. thing with the next two. In between me placing the petals, I do twist them up again. And I think that also helps with not let, letting them like lie flat. Mm -hmm. If you do this just slightly before placing them on the layer in the bottom, I think it also helps. Okay. We'll take note and do that here. Place and get my other two. Is there any technique that you use with the um, this little rolly uh, ball tool here to make the flowers come up more, or is it just kind of like a free for all of spinning? Yeah, the, it does help it. Like it, it helps bring them upward. Um, mm -hmm. If I were doing like a um, what is it, the peony flowers? Mm -hmm. Those I do use a, a larger ball and I put a little bit more pressure because I want each individual petal to like curl up. Oh, okay. So just depending on the effect that you want, um, you can do it a little bit more or a little bit less, just depending on what the final look will be. I see. Very nice. All right. I think that helps you pinching it before putting the next layer definitely made it more. Yeah, this one looks more up. Very cute. All right. Did, I need, did you already put the, the the two and wait, one and two and three and four together? Yes. So okay. one, two, three, four. All of them are on here. And we have just a, a hollow flower in the middle. Yeah. All right. And I am now caught up. So we are good to keep Perfect. moving. Yes, so then we get our little middle and small flower, do our little bud, close it up just slightly, and place that inside of the larger petals. Just like that. And again, you can use this little tool just to press the bud down, and make mm -hmm. sure that the glue gets in there, and there's your flower. Cute. Okay. The bud's where I went wrong last time. Let's see if I got it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hopeful. Okay. Okay. I think it, I think it turned out pretty go. good if I do say so myself. Yeah. Oh, I definitely. love it. So nice. <laughs> so you don't oh, have to be nervous anymore. Flowers. You're there. <laughs> I'm, I'm improving. <laughs> Yes. I'm going to get addicted so to have... this. I'm just going to have a bunch of flowers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you'll continue to do this so you have enough flowers to adorn mm -hmm. the the wooden sign. You can do a smaller sign if you like. I like 16 inch. Some Sometimes it's easier to do 12 inch as mm -hmm. well. Those you can find them in Hobby Lobby actually. Um, oh, okay. Just be be careful to like actually get the package because sometimes the mm -hmm. wood it's sealed so well that it looks flat, but then you open it and it's like bowed over. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So just, just make sure it's a good a good batch. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> All right, we've got Perfect. our flowers. So, What's our next step? Next, we are going to bring over our wooden base. Um, so we can go ahead and start placing the flowers on there. Um, actually, I forgot about the leaves. Do you want to work on the leaves first, Andrea? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's fine. Uh -huh. I've got some of my leaves done, and I'll just go ahead and start working on the other leaves. Move everything around. It's a very big sign. I'm trying to don't yeah. want to lose any of my beautiful, beautiful pieces. Yeah, and the leaves are really easy to do. You can either um, glue them straight to the the front and the back, or if you mm -hmm. wanted to use some of the cubbies to add dimension to them. Um, mm -hmm. What I normally do is I will glue one piece to the other, um, just flat on there. And mm -hmm. then I add dimension by rolling um, the little tool either on it to kind of lift it up in the middle. Oh, uh huh. Or you can also use just your paper, um, like creaser, and crease the leaves up a little bit so that it's not flat. You can roll it like if you're rolling the um, streamers for balloons. 
you can oh. do that as well, just depending <laughs> how flat or not flat you'd like to right. to make your lace. So got it. Those are pretty pretty simple. It's just layering and getting some some dimension on there. Yeah, I love it. Just need some dimension here. I'm gonna try and lift up this one a little bit, see if that works. Or maybe cute. Okay, nice. And all of these are nice because you just use them as fillers. It's not so much that they're gonna be by themselves on the sign. It's in between the little gaps in the sign of the flowers mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's really helpful to have them. And I glued mine backwards. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I do I feel like every other craft I do something backwards. I try and just kind of cover it up. But this one's pretty obvious I'm just gonna undo and then put it back on. There we go. There you go. No one saw a thing. Ah. and i don't know that you'd <laughs> actually be able to tell because like the little stems uh -huh. once you put them in your in your sign they're kind of what's holding the leaf to the wooden sign so they're kind of hidden so oh, if okay you, if you made a boo-boo on those it's okay <laughs> it's Perfect. forgiven thank you needed a need a little help sometimes oh we have some of our other design team members on here saying hi we got custom paper decor and our past design team member, uh, Wendy Sweets. She says, heart, 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 and beautiful flowers. Hi. Diana also says, it's coming together so nicely. Thank you, Diana. We've got um, MF Tezara. Sorry, I'm not sure to say the handle correctly, but hello from San Antonio. I love the flowers. Well, hello to you too. Thank you. Kimberly is a great teacher. You guys, if you were, uh, didn't, get to aren't going to be able to see or didn't catch the flower part um of this live you can always see our recorded lives on youtube we are on there so definitely check that out we can also see all of our past lives which are there too and we've had some pretty fun projects we had a lot of halloween projects and now we're moving on to thanksgiving but soon it is time for christmas oh i can't even wait until <laughs> gonna get even more chaotic <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun the so design team you guys is huh it's so much fun and we just want to do a little bit of everything <laughs> i know you guys um our design team if you guys didn't know from last term they did a lookbook and they are doing the same thing this uh term so a lot of really cool projects coming up to see svgs will be coming out very very soon and another lookbook holiday one is on its way Okay. How are you doing with your, your leaves there? I'm um, not as fast as you, but I've got a few on here, I think. Oh, okay. two ready. Okay. Little pile, like I'm raking in the leaves. <laughs> Luckily, I did a few beforehand just because I figured I'd be a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> but these, I love fall. I love the colors that you can play with in fall. The reds and oranges are so warm. Love using them. There we go. All right, I think I've got my leaves up here. Now I've got a few other pieces. I'm just gonna scoot over here. We even have some acorns, which is fun. Yeah. And those are definitely optional, just depending on what you want to add on there. Yeah. I was even thinking, I think you all have like a gnome SVG. <laughs> I was even tempted on making it more fall color and oh putting so that on, on here i like gnomes so <laughs> you definitely still can't i didn't know gnomes were so popular before and then i started crafting and i saw a lot of gnomes and I, I saw a lot of people i was like oh i wonder who uses a gnome said probably not that many but then you go on and everyone's got a gnome project from stampers to card makers to crafters it's just so cute yes I don't know that my husband would call them cute. I have a huge collection that just <laughs> keeps on getting bigger. So. No way. That's so fun. My mom has like a Santa, not a collection collection, but like um, snowmen for Christmas. She's got oh, quite yeah. a few. That's her like her thing. We even have some when uh, <laughs> she's got a few that are Christmassy, but she likes them so much. She leaves them out all year. So we've got a couple <laughs> just in the house casually. 
year round and off. Yeah. How cute. Now I, I changed them out. The, the nice thing with the gnomes, you can find them to be like seasonal. Uh -huh. so there's like the Valentine's gnomes and the the uh, Easter gnomes I even have. I have some Fourth of July ones. I've stuff. never seen an Easter gnome. No. Um, I was like, I don't have it close by or else I would grab them. <laughs> I already put them away in storage. <laughs> no worries. That's something I'm sure that'll come up around uh, Easter time this year. I'll look for it. Yes. The little scavenger hunt. Alrighty. I think I've got most of my pieces ready um, to start putting on the sign. Okay, perfect. We so we can go it. ahead and start doing that. So mm -hmm. what I would do is bring your sign over to your middle of the work area and um, start doing what I, what I at least a lot of other woodworkers call is a dry fit where you mm -hmm. would place all of your flowers on the sign on your base, just to make sure that you like the position of it so far. Okay. Before you start gluing everything and you're like, oh no, it's offset or <laughs> not where I want it or it doesn't fit. We've got lots of flowers here. Yeah. So wait, wait, at least for the sample that I had made, I started with the sunflower in the middle. You can go uh -huh. ahead and start on the very top. I normally, if you see like the the base of the flower, I have that to be on the wood, but the petals can go outside of the frame. It just oh, depends okay. if you want them more outward or all in. I like to do just at the top of the base to be at the edge of the wood, mm -hmm. just like that. Perfect. And then just Love keep it. going assembling. We can do some of the orange ones. Next, the lighter mm -hmm. orange, our Hawaiian lei. Oh, yeah. Oh. And you'll see here, like, just depending on the petal shapes, mm -hmm. you might be able to kind of arrange them a little bit closer. Um, but once you actually go and glue them, I do put them so that they're slightly overlapped and I don't have a gap. So I don't want to see so much wood there. Mm -hmm. I put it a little bit snug, and then the glue sets, and it's perfect. Like, they, they just stayed upward. Oh, okay. Very nice. And then two sunflowers again. The wood wooden letters are not glued yet. And then the final orange ones here. If you're Lovely. using vinyl for the lettering, I would mm -hmm. recommend putting the vinyl on before gluing the flowers. Because then if you're using the transfer sheets, it's hard to put your transfer uh, sheet on here and then it gets snagged with the flowers. True. Um, okay. Yeah. I've had that happen a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> an expert is an expert because of all the, <laughs> the practice, the ups and downs yeah. and the learning curves. <laughs> Yeah, so now we can actually start gluing them to the base. Um, I'm actually going to continue using the Barely Art glue for um, for this part as well. And mm -hmm. the reason being is the flowers are really lightweight mm -hmm. um, and that helps with it. I don't have to use a glue gun or a wood glue, but if you feel better, you can. But the wood, the Barely Art glue has worked just perfectly for um, light flowers like this. Awesome. Yay. All right. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue as well. See, I'm going to want the petals to kind of come off. A little bit. I love that idea. And then you're going to keep on gluing all of the petals, all the flowers all around. Mm hmm. And when you do that, making sure that you don't leave gap and kind of snug them together. So see, I kind of lifted the sunflower just slightly so mm -hmm. that the petals go underneath, underneath Gosh. it and they're nice and close together. So this is where you just want to have some patience so that the glue <laughs> sets well right. before moving it too much because then it's not going to be sticking very well. Very true. Yeah, I am so, I am such a uh, try and 
go fast. I'm like, I'm like, okay, go fast. But so it takes like time and I need to wait for things and say, okay, take a breath. It's going to be okay. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I tried sewing the other week or a couple weekends ago and I was struggling so hard because I had to be so patient with it. Yeah, you don't want to rush with a sewing machine, <laughs> you know, like, especially if you have long hair. Oh, you just cut your hair. I was going to say long hair it did and a sewing me. machine is not so, so good. <laughs> have you ever gotten caught in a sewing machine before? No, it's just like I, I get scared because you, you kind of have to put your hands down to sew. And like mm. I wear glasses, but I still put my face very close. But I am I guess I'm scared to get too close that my hair's going uh-huh. to get it in there I don't know it's a, <laughs> it's a fear of mine it hasn't happened good it's not well, good. Good. it hasn't happened <laughs> yeah I had long hair I recently cut it uh when we were we were our office was off for veterans day and so I was like I'm gonna take this time to go get my hair cut and I just chopped it all off which has been nice but it was getting caught on a lot of things um just all the time Purses, seatbelts, name it. And I'm using this little, the tool that we use to sculpt things. I'm, I'm using it to just apply pressure so that the, the glue can start setting. Got it. Me too. Place it in. Let things dry. Hopefully I put enough. We'll see later. If a flower falls off, I'll know I didn't put enough. <laughs> yeah, the first time I tried using the Barely Art glue with flowers on a wooden sign was a, a birth sign for a, a, a customer that became a close friend. She Aww. didn't find out if she was having a boy or girl until they showed up at the hospital to deliver. Oh. And so she asked me to do two little gender signs for her and I was like, oh, let me give it a try. The flowers were small. The sign was small. I was like, perfect. It worked out <laughs> perfectly. So, oh, that's so cute. I, I use it. What did she end up having? A girl. Oh, <laughs> cute little baby girl. Yeah, I was excited. That's so sweet. Yeah, I think that's kind of the. I really like seeing the crafters for all these people. Um, their life events, like their big things, their weddings and parties and birthdays and um, new babies and all these things. It's really beautiful to see that you can make something to celebrate like that with other people. Oh, yeah. And if there's not a celebration, then you make up one so you can. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's what holidays are for. And yeah. then uh, just anything else will do. <laughs> All right, I've got my flowers on. Hopefully wow, they're drying. <gasps> no way. <laughs> dead. Yeah, one of my flowers was being a little stubborn on staying there. But now wow. that you have the flowers placed, um, you can start placing your letters where you're going to want to place mm-hmm. them. Um, I usually put the leaves at the very end just so that I can make sure that the lettering is where I want it to be and a mm-hmm. leaf is not in the way. Um, just depending on how picky you are or particular, then you can get a ruler and um, measure to see like if you have an inch on this side and an inch on this side, just depending or if you want to eyeball it. It's really up to you. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm placing the pumpkin at the very edge of the orange flower, mm-hmm. the very edge of both of them. I kind of like that fullness there. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Perfect. Um, I forgot my pencil, but a little trick. If you have a pencil there, Andrea, uh-huh. you can actually lightly like kind of score the little tip of the end and the little tip of like the P so that when you pick it up to put on glue you know Mm -hmm. where to place it oh okay okay so that's a little trick or you can also get like um, painter's tape and just Mm -hmm. kind of put little marks on there that way you know where to place it again gotcha don't have a pencil 
do do do, but I do have some tape. <laughs> I don't have any around, so I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> See, and just a light, light amount of glue is perfect. You don't want to do too much that it seeps through the sides. Mm. If you were to put too much, um, I would recommend either getting like a paper towel or like a parchment paper. Uh-huh. And like lightly dabbing this on the parchment paper so you can remove all your excess glue. So gotcha. it doesn't get on your wooden board. So once you have your light coating. Oh. And then make sure you put your little dot for your eye. I always forget those. And then they're rolling around. Oh. And you can't find them. <laughs> yeah, I almost uh, lost the dot earlier when I was, or when I cut the, paper, the wood out, I was throwing pieces. I was like, wait a second, I'm missing something. <laughs> I'm glad I cut it in See, time. And you're able to slightly adjust. Like if it's a little bit off and you want to fix it, you can still fix it. It still moves around. If mm -hmm. you needed to clean it, once it sets, I would get like a little Q-tip or a little baby wipe. And just if it leaves any residue, then you can clean it up. I had residue on the one I made for the mock-up and mm -hmm. I didn't have to clean it up. It dried clear. So it dries clear on wood. Oh, nice. That's okay, cool. Now. That is good to know. I haven't tried it on a lot of wooden projects, basically, but I'm uh, liking doing this. Yeah. I like the mix of paper and wood. Yeah, you've always had, uh, that's always been like your thing for on our design team. You've always had like the wooden signs and the paper flowers. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, those aren't paper. Those can't be. They're just, they're <laughs> so lovely. And then I found out they really were. And I was like, oh my gosh, they really are paper. Yes. I was like, where? I was like, how could she have used paper? Like, there's no paper. Or there's a, yeah, there's no paper in here. And then this is a wooden sign. It took me a bit, but then I found out how. Very, very talented you are. Oh, I thank you, Andrea. <laughs> That's having it's you on the design a lot of practice. It's been it's... a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed being on the design team. I've gotten to know a lot of other crafters. <laughs> and I'm so like in awe of all their skills. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it, it's good to see to see that it, it kind of mm -hmm. motivates you to to learn new things or to up your game a little bit <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, I would say even uh, myself seeing everyone's projects, I was like, wow, I thought I was a crafter and that these people are crafters. They're amazing. And I've learned so much from you guys. And that's why one of the things I love having um, people on the live is from learning from new techniques and um, new ways of doing something. All right, I've got Hello Pumpkin okay. on my board. Perfect. So once you have that, then you're able to kind of just bring back your leaves. And this is just where it's um, more of a preference, wherever you want to place them, depending on where your letters ended up, you can just mm -hmm. start filling in any gaps. Um, I'm very picky. Usually if I put one on this side, I'll put one on the other side. <laughs> and then I know other crafters that they like to be not symmetric. So it just really depends on, on your, your taste and your, your preferences. Very so nice. either you can place them and glue them at the same time or just do a dry fit at first. So mm -hmm. really up to you. if we're running low on time, I guess we can just glue them on there. <laughs> yeah, I think we're almost out. I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing my thing on there. My my leaves. But they are so cute. They are. And then adding that extra little curl at the edge of them really helps so that they're not flat on the board, especially since uh, the flowers okay. are nice and full. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have flat leaves on there. Yeah, it's a, not the kind of contrast you usually want. Mm hmm it all look very lively, which is it looks good. There we go. Put mine up a little. 
If you want, Andrea, while you're doing the leaves on there, I'll go ahead and do the pumpkin. That yeah, on the that bottom. sounds great. Yeah. So yeah. on these, these are also barely our SVGs. Um, I think they're from the that little farm truck file as well. Yeah. <laughs> I like farm trucks too. Well, um, we have three different sizes and then you just cut out depending on what colors you'd like and you do your brown base and then the color on top. What I ended up doing is using the new cubbies to add dimension to them. I had originally thought of cutting them out in wood, but then I remembered you all have these awesome foam <laughs> And so yeah. they work perfectly to add the right dimension. So what I normally do, I place one down the center. And you don't necessarily want it to show on the edges. So I would mm -hmm. probably only do the middle and the two to the side. That way you can't see the foamies from, from the side view. Smart. Good idea. And you're using the, the one with more height right now or just to go the... Yeah. So okay. definitely the one with more height that makes a big difference. I think this would probably be the same height as what I'm seeing here for my letters. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of gives you the impression that you're using wood without using wood because oh, you're okay. able to, to get that height. <laughs> nice. Especially if you don't have a wood cutter or a glow forge. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm lucky uh -huh. that we have a go forge at work, but um, at home I would just use paper because I don't have anything to cut wood. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we'll cue these out. Alrighty. I love the, how big these pumpkins come out because usually for paper crafts, um, they're like something that could fit in your hand. So this one is like this big sign. I, I like how everything got to be a little bigger. Like these pumpkins are so yeah. cute. <laughs> yeah, I like the the sizing. I was trying to incorporate something that you can use for fall, but wasn't necessarily like thanksgiving or halloween it was kind of just for the season mm -hmm. I was like, okay pumpkins work yeah pumpkins are uh perfect fall what's it called um just like it's kind of like the symbol of fall i guess aside from the leaves mm -hmm. of <laughs> okay perfect so then we place them you see how nice that looks it adds so much dimension by using the cubbies the tall one <laughs> I, love it. I love the dimension really nice and easy you got a lot of good feedback from how the the extra height people have especially for shakers but i didn't think about it kind of showing off wood yeah yeah this is a good application for it okay and then you just kind of place your pumpkins on the bottom. Well, there's plenty of space because the pumpkin, name, like the text is by the flowers. Mm -hmm. So you can play around with exactly the positioning. I have placed the two smaller ones first, and then I place this one on top of it. You can definitely redo that if you prefer. Cute. Alrighty. Almost and there. again, barely art glue. <laughs> I haven't taken out my wood glue for this. I have wood glue and I have hot glue, but I haven't needed to take it out. So I am yes. fine. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Failure forever. <laughs> <laughs> More stuff we can use it on the better because I, I'm not really a, such a fan of hot glue. It just, I always seem to burn myself just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy not burning myself. Yeah, and I had mentioned before during the pregnancy, I actually couldn't use the hot glue gun because my fingers were so sensitive. Mm -hmm. The heat, like it, I wasn't burning myself, but just holding it, the heat was too much. Wow. So I was so happy that 
I was on the design team and I got all my barely art supplies. <laughs> 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 Pregnancy, yes. <laughs> Glad we could help. Yes. Yeah, and then like this top around. pumpkin. I just mm-hmm. put glue glue on the side and I glued it right on top of the other two. Oh, perfect. Alrighty. Yep. And I've got my pumpkins on here. Ah, a little, a little uneven. Just before I press it down, these are super, super sticky. So I'm trying to make sure I got it in the right spot before I push it. There we go. Okay. So someone's asking if the glue is fast drying. It does take a little bit of time, especially on the wood. So just having a little bit of patience, but mm-hmm. it definitely does work out well. If you apply a little bit of pressure, like on the flower after placing it, that helps mm-hmm. so the, wood can, the glue can seep in and, and start sticking. Yeah, definitely. I think whatever um, materials you're using affects how fast it dries. It's fairly mm-hmm. fast drying. It doesn't take like days or anything like that. But um, I would say for something you're right with the, this wood, to be a little bit more careful with how fast you start touching things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. But like, even if I try, try to move the pumpkin right now, mm-hmm. I really have to put pressure on it for me to be able to move. So it is already setting. Wonderful. Yay. It's pretty, pretty set. And it's the same thing with the wood glue. It takes about 20 minutes for it to actually set before you can move it a little bit. Okay, nice. All right. I've got my pumpkins on and I'm just going to add a little, little acorns. I really like the acorns. They're cute, a cute little addition here. And then, oops, I forgot to glue down this leaf. Okay. So now it's just touch up, adding little fillers, little accents, just Mm -hmm. bringing it all together. Perfect. And it looks lovely. I have a lot of pieces still left over. So you guys, if you get this file, you can still add a bunch in there and um, add or subtract. But even with just, I haven't even used everything here. And I think it looks pretty full and pretty lovely, if I do say so myself. Yes, very nice. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kimberly. I love this project. It's turned out so well. I love the flowers. You guys, if you did not catch um, the techniques that we use to make these flowers, this live will be recorded and it will be on our Bailey Art YouTube. I can't even see over the side. It's like Bailey over. It will be on our Bailey Art YouTube. So definitely check back. um, And you can, of course, change the colors, change the wording, and you can make it for any season. It's beautiful. I very much love it. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm, I'm saying if I'm going to take this home, I like it so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Kimberly. It was so pretty. Thank you, Andrea. It was a lot of fun. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, Diana's a super sweet creation. It looks beautiful. Put up. And then I think I saw the pumpkins are so cute. The whimsy was on here. Hello girls. Hi. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, Kimberly, do you remember how I told you we we're going to say goodbye to everyone today? I hope so. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) All right, you can start us off and I'll say it with you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. (laughs) Bye-bye.